Hi, I'm Bob. Let's complete computer exercises 13 to 15 today. They are from Chapter 7, Multiple Regression Analysis with Qualitative Information. In the textbook, Introductory Econometrics, a Modern Approach by Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's solve computer exercise 13. We define the dummy variable equal by and use the tabulate command to find the fractions. Sixty two point four two per cent of the families claim that they would buy equal labeled apples. For part two, the estimated equation is as follows. A $1 increase in the own price decreases the probability of purchasing eco-labeled apples by 0.803 or 80.3 percentage points, holding cross price and other factors in the model fixed. A $1 increase in the price of regular apples raises the probability of buying eco-labeled apples by 0.719 or 71.9 percentage points. For Park 3, the F statistic is 4.43 and its p-value is 0.0015. The four lung price variables are jointly significant at the 1% level. When the family size increases by one person, the probability of buying eco-label apples increases by 2.4 percentage points. It is natural for larger families to consume more apples. When education increases by one more year, the probability of buying eco-label apples increases by 2.5 percentage points. It makes sense that highly educated people are more likely to buy environmentally friendly products. In part 4, we replace family income with its logarithmic term. The new model has a higher R-squared. It fits the data better than the model in part 2. It is 0.1116 versus 0.1098. For part 5, no predicted probability is negative. Out of 660 observations, only two predicted probabilities are greater than one. We should not be worried about it. For the last part, we define equal by tilde as equal to 1 if the predicted probability is equal to or greater than 0 0.5, and equal to 0 if the predicted probability is less than 0 0.5. Comparing equal by and equal by tilde, we find that out of the 248 families not buying the eco-labeled apples, 102 are correctly predicted by the model. It is 41.13%. Out of the 412 families buying the eco-labeled apples, 340 are correctly predicted. It accounts for 82.52%. The buying choice is better predicted by the model.
Let's find answers to computer exercise 14. The estimated equation for the linear probability model is as follows. If a person responded to the previous mailing, her probability of making a contribution on the most recent mailing is 0 0.344, 34 0.4 percentage points higher than the person without responding to the previous mailing, holding average past gifts fixed. My answer to part 2 is not really. The average value of past gifts has a tiny effect on the probability of responding. 18 more Dutch guilders, which is the approximate sample mean, increase the probability by only 0 0.3 percentage points. In part 3, we add the response rate to the model. Its coefficient estimate is 0 0.749. It implies that if the response rate to past mailings increases by 0 0.1 or 10 percentage points, the probability of responding to the most recent mailing will increase by 0 0.075 or 7.5 percentage points, holding the other two variables in the model fixed. When the response rate to past mailings is added to the model, the coefficient on the dummy variable response to the last mailing drops to 0 0.095. It makes sense because these two variables are positively correlated and omitting the response rate will lead to an upward bias in the estimate of the response dummy. That is why the coefficient on response to the previous milling is much higher in part 1. In part 5, the coefficient on the variable Mail's year is 0 0.062. One more mailing per year increases the probability of responding with a gift by 0 0.062 or 6.2 percentage points. Other things equal. It is not a causal effect because the number of mailings per year is determined by factors in the error term, such as family income that also affect the outcome variable. The model suffers from omitted variable bias. Let's solve computer exercise 15. We use the summarize command to find the average, the maximum number, and the minimum number of children in the sample. The sample mean is 2.27. The smallest value is 0, and the largest value is 13. No woman has exactly the average number of children. The average of 2.27 children means if we randomly choose 100 women from the population, the average number of their children is 227. The status tabulate command shows the frequencies and percentages of each category of the dummy variable electricity. 14.2% of the women live in homes with electricity. For part 3, we can compute the average of children of women with and without electricity using the command tabulate with the summarize option. The dummy variable follows the command tabulate, and the continuous variable is put inside the parentheses after the summarize option. Another method in Stata is to use the by sort command. We type by sort electric column, summarize children. The sample mean of children for women without electricity at home is 2.33, while the average is 1.90 for those with electricity. 
the women living in homes without electricity have more children on average than those with electricity. To test whether the population averages are the same, we can run a simple regression of children on electricity. The slope coefficient is the difference in the number of children between the two groups of women. We can read its standard error t-statistic and p-value from the result window. The t-statistic is minus 4.44, and its p-value is 0 to 3 decimal places. We reject the non-hypothesis that the population means are the same at the 1% level. We can obtain the same result in Stata using the command t-test with the buy option. In part 4, we cannot infer that having electricity causes women to have fewer children. The OLS estimates suffer from omitted variable bias because other relevant factors such as age, education and family income influence women's decisions to have children. They are also correlated with whether electricity is available. Without controlling for these factors, we cannot obtain the setters perverse effect of having electricity on fertility. In part 5, we add 7 control variables to the model and the coefficient changes from minus 0 0.429 to minus 0 0.306. It is still statistically significant at the 1% level. In part 6, the interaction term between electricity and education is not statistically significant at the 10% level, with a p-value of 0 0.190. The coefficient on electricity becomes much smaller and is no longer significant, but that is the estimate when education is zero. In part 7, we replace the interaction term with the demand interaction term. The coefficient on electricity becomes close to that in part 5, and it is statistically significant at 1% level. That is because the coefficient on electricity is the effect when education is at the sample mean. It is close to the average partial effect in part 5. Thank you for solving the computer exercises with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.